Welcome back to Dirty 20, everybody. Today, we're going to be discussing multi-classing in 5th edition. Let's get on with the show. Okay, so I've resisted this topic for a while now because I'm not the biggest fan of multi-class. Hear me out. Okay, I get that it opens up a whole world of possibilities, and so I think it's important to uh, discuss. And why don't we take a look at what it says in the player's handbook? Page one six three of the player's handbook gives us chapter six, customization options, and immediately we see a section on multi-classing. Multi-classing allows you to gain levels in multiple classes. Doing so lets you mix the abilities of those classes to realize a character concept that might not be reflected in one of the standard class options. Okay, that's good. I like that. I like the um, idea that they recognize that maybe someone's going to be coming up, well, not that maybe, definitely somebody's going to be coming up with a character that... Uh, isn't exactly one of the classes that they've got in the game. With this rule, you have the option of gaining a level in a new class whenever you advance in level, instead of gaining a level in your current class. Your levels in all your classes are added together to determine your character level. For example, if you have the three levels in Wizard and two in Fighter, you're a fifth level character. As you advance in levels, you might primarily remain a member of your original class with just a few levels in another class, or you might change course entirely, never looking back at the class you left behind. You might even start progressing in a third or fourth class. Compared to a single class character of the same level, you'll sacrifice some focus in exchange for versatility. Now, this is where I feel like multi-classing loses me a little bit. What do they mean by giving up on focus? Well, essentially, what multi-classing means is that you're not going to reach certain milestones of your character class as quickly as someone who did not dip into other classes. For example, uh, the monk at fifth level uh, gets the really, really awesome um, uh, feature of stunning strike. Now... If you multi-class, you're not going to get that until later on, whether it's six level, if you just take one dip into something else, or further down the line. And this is just one example. The trouble is that I want to get to these features, whether it's, you know, the glamour bard um, and, and their ability at six level to, you know, move um, allies or cast command... Um, uh, at will basically like these are really really cool features that have been designed by the game designers and so multi-classing can feel like you're just putting yourself behind and the payoff of gaining some kind of lower level skills and lower level abilities and features uh, and not entirely the full range when you do multi-class doesn't really pay off for me the other wrinkle is prerequisites. Let's take a look at that. Prerequisites. To qualify for a new class, you must meet the ability score prerequisite for both your current class and your new one, as shown in the multi-classing prerequisite table. For example, a barbarian who decides to multi-class into the druid class must have both strength and wisdom scores of 13 or higher. Without the full training that a beginning character receives, you must be a quick study in your new class, having a natural aptitude that is reflected by higher than average ability scores. I, I, I understand it. Um, I also understand um, the fact that if you didn't have some of these prerequisites, you'd essentially be building really terrible characters, which were really bad uh, in their multi-classing. So it's almost like a, a check and balance to say, look, if your character doesn't have this ability score, this multi-class is probably not a good idea for you. So we also have uh, this table that shows the prerequisites. Uh, Barbarian, you know, strength 13. Bard, charisma 13. You know, 13 is usually the, it is the prerequisite uh, score. Um, and you might be able to, you know, when you go up a level, increase certain um, ability scores in order to get you there. But just 
this adds a wrinkle. Now, this means that you have to plan your multi-classing kind of from minute one of character creation. Like I said before, you can potentially um, increase your ability scores when you go up in a level, but again, you're giving up on whether it might be a feat or something like that. So the idea of multiclassing is one that I feel like you kind of have to plan for. It also means that certain combinations of classes are going to be better. So whether it's the charisma class based ones, such as warlock, sorcerer, paladin, um, you know, those are going to kind of shine more because you're going to be able to put points in other things or you're not going to have to devote resources to other ability scores and inevitably this creeps into min maxing power gaming which i'll admit i'm guilty of sometimes i want to know what the 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 optimum uh kind of uh you know stats are for a particular um class so we're, I think we're all guilty of it to a certain degree, but this is where it can start to creep into the obnoxious kind of power gaming and min-maxing that uh, does happen in the game. Do not get me started on multi-classing with spellcasters and what that means for your spell slots and which ones you can regain, whether it being a short rest or a long rest. It, it, it gets, I mean, the, the, the magic system just in general is a little bit messy. And this just throws it in the mire. So, you know, maybe we'll do a whole episode on that because it's 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 complicated. So uh, with all this being said, why multi-class at all, you might be asking? Well, I think the one saving grace is if you have a solid character concept, an archetype, something that you... Uh, are very clear on what you want to be able to do. I think multiclassing can be the key to unlocking uh, the building of that character. Um, whether it's a specific character like Tulok the Barbarian uh, does on his amazing YouTube with the, you know, um, uh, virtually all of his character builds, or if it's something that really comes from within you, it's really wacky and you want to try and do something different, again, multi-classing is absolutely the key that can unlock it. So in these cases, I'm all for it, 100% go for it. There we have it. Thank you so much for watching. Um, please like and subscribe and uh, let us know in the comments down below uh, how you've um, kind of dealt with multi-classing. Is it something that you usually do with your characters? If so, why? If not, why not? As always, thank you so much and keep slaying. If you've enjoyed this content, then please smash that like button, subscribe, share this around online, and uh, come and visit our website, www.lavictoriaproductions.com, to see all our past episodes, as well as our blog posts, and all the stuff that we're currently working on at La Victoria Productions. Why not reach out to us and tell us what you think of our videos? You can reach us on Twitter. At Mouth La Victoria is our producer. We are also on Instagram. I am Enano LVP, and our producer is Jazzy J Shiro. We're also La Victoria Productions on Facebook and LinkedIn. Come on by and let us know what you think.